With Halloween just around the corner, I figured we would explore some ghost stories of our past. Today we'll be reading an ancient Roman tale recorded by Pliny the Younger in one of his letters. It goes as follows. There was at Athens a large and spacious, but ill-reputed and pestilential house. In the dead of night, a noise resembling the clashing of iron was frequently heard, which, if you listened more attentively, sounded like the rattling of fetters. At first it seemed at a distance, but approached nearer by degrees. Immediately afterward, a phantom appeared in the form of an old man, extremely meager and squalid, with a long beard and bristling hair, rattling the gyves on his feet and hands. The poor inhabitants consequently passed sleepless nights under the most dismal terrors imaginable. This, as it broke their rest, threw them into distempers, which, as their horrors of mind increased, proved in the end fatal to their lives. For even in the daytime, though the specter did not appear, yet the remembrance of it made such a strong impression on their imaginations that it still seemed before their eyes and their terror remained when the cause of it was gone. By this means the house was at last deserted, as being judged by everybody to be absolutely uninhabitable, so that it was now entirely abandoned to the ghost. However, in hopes that some tenant might be found who was ignorant of such great calamity which attended it, a bill was put up giving notice that it was either to be let or sold. It happened that Athenodorus, the philosopher, came to Athens at this time, and reading the bill ascertained the price. The extraordinary cheapness raised his suspicion. Nevertheless, when he heard the whole story, he was so far from being discouraged that he was more strongly inclined to hire it, and in short, actually did so. When it grew towards evening, he ordered a couch be prepared for him in his fore part of the house, and after calling for a light, together with his pen and tablets, he directed all his people to retire within. But that his mind might not, for want of employment, be open to the vain terrors of imaginary noises and apparitions, he applied himself to writing with all his faculties. The first part of the night passed with the usual silence. Then began the clanking of iron fetters. However, he neither lifted up his eyes nor laid down his pen, but closed his ears by concentrating his attention. The noise increased and advanced nearer, till it seemed at the door and at last in the chamber. He looked round and saw the apparition exactly as it had been described to him. It stood before him, beckoning with the finger. Athenodorus made a sign with his hand, as it should wait a little, and bent again to his writing. But the ghost, rattling its chains over his head as he wrote, he looked round and saw it beckoning as before. Upon this he immediately took up his lamp and followed it. The ghost slowly stalked along, as if encumbered with its chains, and having turned into the courtyard of the house, suddenly vanished. Athenodorus, being deserted, marked the spot with a handful of grass and leaves. The next day he went to the magistrates and advised them to order that spot be dug up. There they found bones co-mingled and intertwined with chains, for the body had moldered away by long lying in the ground, leaving them bare and corroded by the fetters. The bones were collected and buried at the public's expense. And after the ghost was thus duly laid, the house was haunted no more. The letter ends there. What strikes me about this story is how deeply familiar the horror tropes are, the nighttime noises that increase over time, the shackled ghost, the restless spirit in need of closure. It all reads as any story you might hear today, but with a new coat of paint. I hope you enjoyed this quick look at an ancient ghost tale. Let me know if you'd like to hear more about our haunted past. And once again, I want to thank Beverly Johnson for her awesome artwork. See you next time, and happy Halloween.